the faith that we have that can conquer anything. Matter of fact, some of us are here because of the faith that you've given us. Faith, Lord God, to be able, Lord God, to keep serving, to keep believing, Lord God, to continue to believe you for the impossible. And so we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. We also thank you, Lord God, for the great shepherds of this house and how we can celebrate them and honor them for the service that they have given, not only to this church, but to this community. And so we give you praise for it now. Now we ask you, Lord God, to sit on us. We need a word from you today that will shift us from where we are into where you want us to be. So give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to us today, and we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Can you clap your hands one more time and give God a big praise? Amen. And while you're clapping, give it up one more time for Pastor and First Lady. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. I count it an honor and a privilege to be with you all on this morning. Uh, this is uh, the Faith Center. It's like my second home. And I'm just glad to be in the house on today and glad to celebrate my dear friends. Amen. I'm thankful that uh, as a pastor, I, I thought I got one friend, but I got two friends. Amen. And both of them, and I just thank God for them. Now, you all appreciate them as your pastors, but I appreciate them as friends. Um, sometimes when you're pastoring, it gets very lonely. Amen. Some of y'all don't think that because you think everybody's around you, but... Not everybody understands the struggle and the, and the things that you have to deal with as pastors. And to have a man of God that I could call on any time of the day. And he picks up the phone and he answers the phone. I thank God for that. So I thank God for my friend. And I'm here for my friends. Amen. But I'm also here because I'm on assignment to give a word today. Amen. And so I want to start off uh, this word. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 20. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, I'm thankful. Uh, I have uh, uh, some products here that the Lord has blessed me to put together. I have a, a little booklet here called Faith for Provision. Amen. How many of y'all believe in God for some provision this year? Amen. And I also have a, a CD called The Blessed Life that just kind of puts you in a place where you understand that this is your time to be blessed. How many of y'all believe it's your time to be blessed? Amen. Ephesians 3 and 20, if you have it, say amen. Here's what it says. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let's, re let's read that again. I want you all to read it with me. Come on, let's get in our spirit. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power I want to just give you just a, a simple topic that I believe God is prophetically saying to you today that this is your season of no limits somebody shout no limits amen and that was a little quiet I need somebody to shout no limits I believe that in this season God is going to cause you to think the unthinkable to dream the undreamable and to do the impossible. I'm going to say that again. I said in this season, God is going to cause you to think the unthinkable, to dream the undreamable, and do the impossible. I got three people. Let me see if I can get five. In this season, God is going to cause you to think the unthinkable, to dream the undreamable, and do the impossible. I'm talking about that in this season, you're going to look at stuff and in your own flesh you couldn't do it, but God is going to do it through you. I'm talking about things that you are going to do that you wish that you dream of doing. And I believe that in this season, matter of fact, I have a declaration going on at the church and I want to say this to you all, that this is the fourth quarter of the year. We are in the last three months of the year. And those of y'all that in football, you know that in the fourth quarter, everybody starts holding up the number four. 
that means that I don't care what happened in the first quarter. I don't care what happened in the second quarter. I don't care what happened in the third quarter. The fourth quarter, we're going to take this game. God told me to tell Faith Center that in the fourth quarter, you're about to take this year. That everything, come on, somebody, everything that God promised you, if it didn't happen in January, if it didn't happen in June, if it didn't happen in September, you better get ready because it's about to happen. Look at somebody say fourth quarter, fourth quarter. And in this quarter, you're going to finish strong. I need you to high five somebody say finish strong, finish strong. Come on, come on, finish strong. Now, let, let, let me help you with something. The measure that you receive this, this prophetic gift is the measure you're going to receive what God has in your life. I am not standing up here giving you a lecture. I am prophetically telling you that in the next three months, somebody in here is about to walk into something that you never walked into before. And some of y'all are sitting there acting like I'm talking in a lecture. The devil is a liar. You better get happy and you better get ready because something is about to shift in your life. Yes! Yes! Now, when I tell you to give your neighbor a high five, I don't need this little silly stuff. I need you to ride back and slap that hand and tell him, finish strong! Finish strong! Finish strong! Finish strong! Finish strong! All right, take your seats. Now, I'm letting you know, amen, that it's always according to your faith. Because somebody's sitting in here saying, Pastor, I done had a bad year. Ain't nothing happening for me this year. Well, if you keep confessing that, then that's what you're going to have. But if you change your confession, you'll change where you're about to go. I wish I had three people in here that's ready to change your mind about what that. Look at your neighbors. I'm changing my mind. Now, listen. Everything started shifting for me when I started changing the way I thought. When I come in here, I mean, I've been here, I don't know if I came here earlier this year, I don't know when I came here, but all I know is it's different now. <laughs> Every time I come here, something new going on. And, and while y'all doing praise and worship, you know, uh, you know, as a pastor, you know, I think, and they know this, as a pastor, you're looking around like, that won't hear last time I came here. That won't hear last time I came here. Come on. That won't hear last time I came here. And some of y'all won't hear last time I came here. You know what that lets me know? That this ministry is about to go to a level that you've never seen it before. I declare a decree. The faith center is about to walk into no limits. That anything is possible if you believe it. Somebody shout yes. Now, the reason why you miss your chance to shout it's because you don't understand that whatever God makes happen for his house. Let me, let, me, let me come over here. Whatever God makes happen for his house, he's got to make it happen for your house. Y'all ain't hearing me now. Amen. So whenever you come to the faith center and you see new paint on the wall, you best believe some new paint about to be on your wall. And whenever you see new carpet, you best believe some new carpet is coming. And whenever you see new builders, you best believe... Because whatever God makes happen for his house, he is obligated, y'all ain't hearing me, he is obligated to make happen for your house. You know why? Because you partners in this thing. You are investors in the increase that's happening at the Faith Center. That's why every time you come through here, you ought to come shouting. Praising God, because as God increases this house, he's about to increase your house. Somebody better get ready, because I pronounce to you today that the days of your lack is over. Come on. That you are about to walk into some abundance that you've never seen before. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, before I get going in my revelation, I need you to see if you sitting on the right row, because there's some rows in here that just act like you at the movie theater somewhere. <laughs> See, whenever you go to the Jay-Z, Beyonce concert, 
Matter, matter of fact, I had a, I had a privilege to go to the first to the opening game at the Atlanta Falcons when they were playing the Green Bay Packers. Can I help you with something? You didn't have tell, to tell nobody to yell. There was nobody on the mic saying, now, if you believe. I mean, they got up, yelled, and nobody had to tell folks to stand on their feet. They stood on their feet, watch this, because they believed in a group of people on the field. Watch this, that they don't know and don't have no covenant with. But their excitement was so big that they got up and screaming and yelling for four hours over some people that they don't know. And here you are in the house of God, and you can't even lift your hands off of a God that makes a way for you, off of a God that opens up a door for you. I need somebody to get on your feet and give God a shout of praise. Five, three people, give my a high five, say, I got a reason to praise them. Come on. Come on. I said, I got a reason to praise them. I said, I got a reason to praise them. I got a reason to praise them. He's opened up too many doors. He's made too many ways. I got a reason to praise him. Hey! Watch this. Wait a minute. And if... And if you keep getting on my nerves, I'll shout right in your face. Let me me ask a question. Has anybody been healed? Has anybody been delivered? Did God give you a job that you didn't qualify for? Did God give you a house that you didn't qualify for? That you ought to get on your feet and give God a... Shout of praise, hallelujah. Now take your seats. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey. Look, look, look at your neighbor and say, we just get warmed up. We just get warmed up. Hey. Hey, hey, we just coming out the tunnel right now. We ain't even hit the field yet. All right, come on. Now let me show you something. Because the same energy that you got in here is the same energy you got to take back home. You, you, you got to go home and give them a shout. <laughs> you got to walk through your living room and say, Hallelujah! Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't ready for this. Listen, let me help you with something. Everything that's going to happen in your life is going to change when you get a different mentality of where God is about to take you. The reason why I can shout is because of not what I see now, but for what God has shown me about my future. How many of y'all believe that where you at now is not where you're going to end up? Do I got 50 people in here that know that the devil is a liar? And you know that God is setting you up for the biggest breakthrough in your life? So here's what I want you to do. I was reading this scripture here, uh, Isaiah 54, verse 2 through 4. Y'all take your seats. Chill out for a minute. I'm going to get back to you. Isaiah 54, verse 2 through 4. This is the message translation. Listen, listen what he says. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Here's a, here it is. Think big. Lord, I wish I could get somebody up in here. Amen. See, what you don't understand is that every time I come in here, I can see your pastors think big. Because I remember when he first came in here, and it didn't look like this. So you got to understand that you have pastors, you have leaders that think big. Watch this. Not just about this church, but they think big about you. That's why, that's why they have a family conference. Ain't, no, ain't nobody having no family conference. No, y'all ain't feeling it. Ain't nobody having no family conference. Your church is having one. You know why? Because at home, they're thinking about you. They, they're saying, what can we do? 
to make sure that the children are growing and the marriage is growing and parents are growing. Come on, somebody. What you guys got at that family conference, you would have to pay $300 at another place for. It's getting quiet up in here, but I'm going to preach it anyway. You ought to thank God that you got somebody that like you. Come on, somebody. You ought to thank God that you got somebody that's thinking about you. And, and, and maybe y'all ain't never been under some leadership that's been shady. Maybe you ain't been under somebody that steal from the church and steal from the people and cheat on their wives and cheat on their husbands and do stuff. Amen. But when you up under that and then you find somebody that's walking in integrity, somebody that loves God, y'all ain't going to say nothing, somebody that treats people with respect, you ought to be clapping your hands right now and thanking God that he gave you the leaders you got. Somebody shout, think big. think big. In other words, watch this now. I got to change my mindset because in this season, God's going to blow my mind. He wants you to think big. I'm going to give you another. He wants you to talk big. He wants you to act big. Why are you walking around here acting like you ain't somebody? You know, every now and then, you got to get your swag. You, uh, it, I don't know what y'all, you know, back in the day, you know, when my father was growing up, he would say, you know, you knew when somebody had some money because they had a walk on them. And then they turn back at you. It, the funny thing is, is believers now, the reason why people don't want to come to church is because believers ain't got no swag. See, when you're serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, how many know your walk changed? How many, how many know your mentality changes? And I'm telling you, I'm tired of people that are, that are not in covenant with God got more swag than the folks that got a covenant with God. If there's anybody that should be happy, it's church folks. If there's anybody that should have some swag, it's church folks. If there's anybody that should be smiling, it's church folks. But when you see us on Monday morning, hey, how you doing? Ooh, child, the, oh, God. It's just I got so much going on. How you got so much going on and God is making a way for you out of no way? Come on, somebody. If anybody should be sad, it should be people that don't know God. But I'm here to report to you that just because you know your God, God is about to enlarge your territory. He's about to make you bigger than you've ever been before. But what you got to do is change your mentality. Think big. Proverbs 23, get that up, guys. The Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if I change my thinking, I'll change my destination. You are right now, you are where you are at as a result of your thought process. You ain't got to get five jobs. Change your thinking. Come on, somebody. You, 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 ain't, you ain't got to run around trying to get uh, a feeling fulfilled. Change your thinking. You change your thinking, you'll change your destination. Every day, and that's why you're here, because at the Faith Center, he's been working on your thinking for a long time. Come on, how many of y'all glad you're here? Yeah. Think big. Then I'm going to, if I think big, then I'm going to talk big. Talk big. Second uh, Corinthians 4.13 says, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So watch this. Whatever I speak matches what I believe. Yeah. Now, how many of y'all believe that by the end of this year, God can cancel your debts? Yeah. I, 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 I need some radical folk that believe for the supernatural. Come on, somebody. Because watch this. Now, now so, so since I believe that, you can't stop my testimony now. Come on now. How, how many of y'all believe in God for a promotion right now? Amen. So what I got to do? I'm going to change the way I talk. Come on, somebody. Because as I think in my heart, that's who I am. Go think big. I'm going to talk big. Let me give you one more. And then we're going to act big. James 2.17 says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So now you got to put some works with this. Now you got to put yourself in a position so God can do something for you. Because the days of you being mediocre are over. Matter of fact, can I say this to you? Mediocrity is no longer an option in your life. Lord have mercy. Let, 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 let me help you with this. Mediocre means to blend in. It means to be so-so. It means to be dull. Have any of y'all ever been around some dull people? Amen. Don't turn to your left or your right because they may be sitting on your road. 
See, in this season, God has put so much power in you that now you got to change your attitude, change your thought process, change your actions, and stop blending in with everybody and stand out. Come on. I I'm prophesying to 20 people right now in the name of Jesus that the next three months of this year, you ain't going to blend in with nobody. You're going to stand out. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, they're going to see you as soon as you hit the door. Give, some, give your neighbor a high five. Say, stand out. Stand out. Now listen, this is all going to happen according to your faith. Okay? So if you think no limits now, is faith has got to be the foundation of this. Let me give you a scripture. Matthew 27 through 29 helps us with this. This is a story about the blind man. He says, uh, can y'all get that up real quick? Matthew 9, 27 through 29. There it is. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him. Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch he their eyes, saying, Come on, according to your faith, be it unto I need you to stay right there. According to your faith. According to your faith. Notice it doesn't say according to your credit. Are, are you listening? Notice it doesn't say according to your bank account. Notice it doesn't say according to your degrees. Yeah. Are y'all listening now? Yeah. Because see, somebody done told you that your credit is bad, that your money ain't right, and you ain't got enough education. But my Bible says it's according to my faith. See, what you should be shouting about right now is the people that, they, that the credit is bad and the folk that money ain't right and you ain't got the degree. You should be up on your feet shouting because you just got your answer. Everything that's going to happen in your life ain't going to be about your credit, ain't going to be about your money, ain't going to be about your degrees. It's going to be about your... Woohoo! Everything you need is going to be... So what I got to do now? I got to now. build up my faith now. See, because if, if, if faith is the thing that's going to get me everything I need, then I got to build it up. Yeah. I got to get it. Why? Because faith is the foundation. Yeah. Faith is the foundation. So everything that's coming against you, watch this, is coming to shake your faith. Because faith is what's going to get you to where you need to be. Yeah. Everything that's coming, it, it ain't nothing personal. It's about your faith. So when somebody get on, your nose, get on your nerves at work, it ain't personal. It's the enemy trying to deter your faith. And here you go. I'm tired of this job. I'm quitting. God ain't told you to quit. God told you to stand there and put on the whole armor of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Amen. Listen, I'm tired of Christians punking out every time they, somebody say something to them. When are the real soldiers going to stand up and tell the devil, is that all you got? Is that all you got to say? Come on, you don't understand. I've been in my word all day long. So faith got to be the foundation. Somebody say foundation. foundation. Somebody say foundation. foundation. So uh, I, I got this thing I want to show y'all because when I was growing up, hey amen, uh, my father, you know, he used to teach us how to box and stuff. And so, and so he, he gave me this thing, uh, and some of y'all know it as the Weeble Wobble. Now, so he gave us this thing, and, and, and so, uh, you know, and I'm sorry, you know, I mean, I'm a 49ers fan, so I just had to, I'm from San Francisco, y'all pray for us that we get a win this year, all right, okay, but, 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 but he would put this thing in front of us, and we would hit it, and it would come back up. So then we would hit it again. And it would cut back up. Now, I'm a young boy, so I didn't understand, you know, the dynamics of all this. So, you know, I, kept, I said, Dad, why is it that no matter how hard I hit this, it keeps coming back up? He said, son, it's not about what's in it. It's about what's under it. He said, son, there's a foundation, y'all ain't going to help me, that is sitting up under this thing. So every time it gets hit, it pops right back up. God told me to tell you that the reason why you need to get your faith up is because whenever you get hit, you can come right back up. I wish I had 50 people up in here. Amen. And if you've been hit this year, you coming right back. You coming right back. You coming right back. Every time the devil hits you, you pop right back up. I need to ask somebody, have you been hit in 2018? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm back. Because every time I get hit, I pop right back up. 
Now let me help you with something because now you're saying, okay, how can I get my faith built up? Can I help you with this? Romans 10, 17 says this. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So watch this now. I'm here to celebrate your pastors because they have been on assignment. They have been on assignment to make sure that your foundation is built. Not on them, but on faith. But faith only comes when it what? Here's the word. Come here, Lewis. Faith cometh. Cometh. Cometh means to keep coming. Watch this. Faith cometh when it hears the word of God. All right, let's, let's try it again. Faith is what I need to get that job, to get that property, to get everything that God has promised me. Because I can't get it with my money. I got to get it by faith. Watch this. But faith comes when it hears, watch this, the word of God. So watch this now. I'm sick. I'm sick. Watch this. Now, faith is what puts me in a position to receive my healing. But I can't get faith unless I speak the word of God. So instead of me sitting here talking about, oh, my back, oh, my knee. I mean, I, I, I understand with his stripes I'm healed. I, I get all of that, but I'm just trying to be real. See, that's the problem with you. You're trying to be real and you, try, and you ain't trying to be faith. See, so, so instead of me, instead, see, because faith is on assignment. And faith needs an assignment, and the assignment only responds when it hears the word. See, some of y'all, you haven't spoken the word in a long time, so your faith is chilling. Sit down. Some of y'all, you've been in church all your life, and your faith been chilling out. You've heard sermon after sermon after sermon, and the reason why you haven't seen any results is because faith hadn't had any opportunity to do anything because it ain't heard no word. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. When faith hears the word, faith gets up and says, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. And with his stripes, I am healed. Look at your neighbor and say, faith is coming. Come on. Find somebody say, faith is coming. I'm telling you, faith is coming to your house. Faith is coming to your job. Faith is coming to your marriage. Faith is coming to your money. Faith is coming. Watch this now. But here's the dilemma that we're in, saints. Romans 10 verse 14. Here's the dilemma. How? Shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? See, here's the, here's the dilemma that we're in. You think that your pastors are here just to entertain you and to make you feel good. They are on assignment to build up your faith so that you could get stuff that you couldn't afford. Watch this. No, 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 listen. So that you could get stuff that everybody said you couldn't have. Whenever you come into this building, as much as we love the singing and dancing and running around, the most important thing you need right now is faith. And when your man or woman of God get up here and they stand before you and they take 30 minutes out of this service and preach to you, that is your time. That is your recipe for destination. That Everything that they say contributes to building up your faith so you can get stuff that you couldn't get on your own. My grandmother is 87 years old. She's a member of my church. She grew me up in the Lord. I'm so glad to pastor my grandmother. But she came up to me and somebody told her, said, you know, you, I know you're not feeling good today. Don't come to church. She looked at him and she said, I can't miss a service. Look what she said about her grandson. That's my pastor. And his destiny is in his mouth. I, I, I worded it wrong. She said, my destiny 
is in his mouth. Now, 87 years old, don't you think she should be chilling out? But you know what she said? I'm not through yet. She said, I can't miss a service because as long as I got breath in my body, my destiny is in his mouth. The day you miss a service, I ain't talking about work or vacation. I'm talking about you just, I don't feel like it. The day you say, I don't need to hear the man of God, I don't need to hear the woman of God, is the day you miss rules, instructions, your recipe for where God is about to take you. Can I help you with something? Because you sure ain't getting it at your job. You spend 40 hours at a place that ain't put nothing in you, and they taking everything from you. So when you come here, you open up your heart and say, Pastor, tell me how to get out of this thing. Tell me how to shift my life. Tell me how to, first lady, when you get up and speak, show me how to be a woman of God. Show me how to be what God has called me to be. And when they speak, they are building up your faith. So that you can obtain and get all the things that you need from God. Amen. This is called the faith center. So that means everything that's going to happen in here is going to be according to your faith. Now let me help you with something because faith gives you awesome results. Because some of y'all don't understand the reason why you got to shout about stuff that you ain't in yet. is because you got to start praising God by faith. That means even if I don't see it, I'm going to give him glory anyway. Are y'all listening to me? Who in here see yourself in a whole nother place in the next three months than where you at right now? I dare you to praise him like you already know his home. Woohoo! So here, here's what God told me to tell you that this is your now moment. This is your now moment. Everything. That, that has to happen for you will happen now. Let me help y'all with something. Whenever, whenever, I, whenever your man or woman of God says statements like that, that is something you have to receive by faith. That is not, that is not something for you to just say, oh, that was nice. Because the devil will minimize the word in your life to make you feel like we just talking. Can I help you with something? Ever since we've been declaring our season of miracles, a person came to me and said, Pastor, I've been trying to get a job since I moved to Henry County for four years. She said, I sold my seed, and I believe God for a miracle. She said, that week, somebody say that week. That week, she got four job offers, and she's starting one of them next week. Now, what does she do? She came in there desperate. I need instructions. I need a word. What she do? Took the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Took the word, applied it to her life, sowed her seed, started confessing the word, and she got what she got. Now, I'm telling you all right now, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he's got to perform it. Now, I don't know about you all. I'm tired of shouting about stuff I ain't walking in. I'm tired of praising God about stuff I ain't seeing. The devil is a liar. I'm going to put this word to work. I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus, and I'm going to believe everything that he say because I've tried it on my own, and it ain't working for me. But as soon as I put my hand in God's hand, and as soon as I put the word to work. Everything started turning around. God told me to tell you, this is your season of turnaround. Come on. That everything you've been believing God for, God says if you turn around, you're going to see it happen in your life. I need you to get up and turn around real quick. Come on. I'm telling you, your family is turning around. Your marriage is turning around. Your situation is turning around. I, I, I'm going I'm to leave you with this. Somebody shout no limits. no limits. If I get my faith right, I could believe God for stuff that I've never seen before. If I get my faith right, come on, y'all say amen to this now. If I get my faith right, I can, I can experience stuff that I've never experienced before. If I get my faith right, so somebody shout no limits. No limits now. So, 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 so last year, amen, I'm just going to give you this illustration, then we're going to go home. When last year, amen, on my birthday, amen, my, my staff did something special for me. They hooked me up. Amen. To go skydiving. Yeah. Skydiving was on my bucket list. It was just something I always wanted to do. I, I know y'all don't want to jump out no plane, but I just, I just, I, cause I'm a daredevil. That's just in me. Amen. How many daredevils I got? Amen. My wife told me it's cause I'm a Leo. I don't know nothing about that. But anyway, so, 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 so I get to the skydiving place and they, and they putting everything on me and you know, and we getting ready and we getting suited up and I'm cool. I'm like, come on, let's do this. Let's do it. I'm pumped. You come on. Let's go. Let's go. 
and I get, I get up in a plane, and we go all the way up, and I'm cool. Woo! Let's go! And, you know, all, all these guys are in there, you know, they're like, come on, dude, you can do it. I'm like, yeah, man, I can do this, man. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, buddy. But, Pastor, when they open the door, oh, I I said, Lord, I didn't think this thing through here. When they open the door and you poke your head out and all you see is clouds. Now, if you ain't never spoke in tongues before, you're going to speak then. Some of y'all don't even speak ahead. You're going to make one of them. You're going to do something. Man, they open up the door. And then I was like, oh, man, I don't know. So one guy was like, you all right? Because if you don't want to do it, we go back down. And then one dude in the back said something that hit me. He said, come on, dude, don't be scared. And I was like, like, man, I ain't scared. Man, open up the door. Let's go. Man, I got out there, and the guy told me, he said, now listen. He said, you're not going to jump by yourself. He said, because this is your first time. So we got somebody that's going to be strapped on to you. So he said, we we strapped him on to you. He he strapped on to you. He said, now, listen, he's going to give you some instructions. He's going to tell you some things to do. So just in case you get in trouble, you got somebody that can help you out. Why y'all act like you know what I'm talking about? Hold on now. So, So we get out there. So immediately we jump out. And I'm in the air, and I'm, you know, and he's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm great. No, 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 no. He says now, he says now, okay, what, what, uh, what height are we at? Because I had to tell him what, you know, what feet we had or whatever he told me. And then he said, okay, it's time to pull it. So when I pull, you know, I'm supposed to pull it when the, when the per- parachute comes. But for some reason, I was freaking out so much that I couldn't find it. I, 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 I can't find it. I can't find it. He said, stay still, stay still. He grabbed my hand. He said, be calm. Stand still. He said, now just follow me. He said, I'm going to bring your hand back. He brought my hand back, and he grabbed the lever with my hand. And he said, I'm going to pull with you. One, two, three. We pulled it together, and we landed safely. God told me to tell you that if you're scared to get out there, if you're scared to do what God has called you to do, you ain't by yourself. God says, I'm with you. And just in case you don't know how to get out of it, he'll grab your hand. That's why I like the hymn writer that said, hold to his hand. God's unchanged. He grabbed your hand. And when when we grabbed the lever, the parachute went up and we landed safely. Some of you all right now, you know God is telling you to do something that is beyond your education, that is beyond your money. That is even beyond what your family is used to doing. But God said in this season, it's no limit time. The limits are off of you. All you got to do is trust him because he's strapped to you. And he ain't going to let you land crazy. You're going to land right on your feet. And what I'm telling you right now is that this is your season of no limits. The next two and a half months, because we're here now, next two and a half months, I want you to put something on your paper that you were scared to put because of your lack of income, your lack of education, whatever it was, you are in a place called the Faith Center. And the ground is set for the supernatural. And all you got to do is get out here and try. Do something you and your wife get together. You and your husband get together and say, you know, we're going to believe God for this property. We're going to believe God for this. We're going to believe God. I need the young people to start believing God that God is going to do something miraculous in your life. Come on, I need you as a family to start saying, you know what, in the next two and a half months, we're going to write down some stuff that we're going to see happen before 2018 even comes around the corner. See, let me help you something. Your faith is dead if it's not being tested. You see what I'm saying? See, it's safe now because you can see everything. But why don't you get into a place where you can't see nothing? And then let God show you another side of him that you've never seen before. 
Can I help you with something? I don't know if I told, I told y'all this story before, but some of y'all that never seen me before. I moved out of here. I moved out here from San Francisco, California in 2003. Born and raised in San Francisco, California. God told me, pick up your family and move to a place you've never been before because I'm going to do a new thing in your heart. Genesis 12 told Abraham, get up from your kindred and move to a place. We got up and moved. I think it was, yeah, I think it was y'all that, who up here was talking about they got up and moved from Michigan? Somebody, that was you. When you said that, I mean, I was about to run, okay? Because God will tell you to do some crazy stuff just to see if all this shouting you've been doing, you really trust them. You can't tell me God won't make a way. We and my, we and my wife and my three kids got in a car and we drove from San Francisco out to Atlanta based on God said. No house. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. No apartment. No, no place. We just gonna follow God. You know, we tried to get a place, but that didn't work out. So what are we going to do? Stay in San Francisco and wait to get a place, or are we just going to move and let God work this thing out? And we're going to just do it. Thank God I got a woman of God who trusted me and said, okay, let's go. Kids in the back. Ran, got out here. Nothing. 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 I thought we had a place that fall through. All I had was, a, uh, was an aunt who lived in Griffin. I called her. I said, can I bunk with you? We sat down there, bunked with her. We, li we went from living in a four-bedroom house in San Francisco to living in a room at my aunt's house. And we sitting in there. I just ran out of money because I spent all my money on the move. Everything is gone. What am I supposed to do now? And sometimes that's just where God wants you. And saints, what happened from there? The Lord supernaturally did something in our lives. The next week, I got a job supernaturally out of church as a music director. The next week, I was able to get my kids enrolled in Christian school with the tuition paid. I, I, I don't have time to tell you all the stuff that God did. Immediately, God started opening up doors. And then two years later, we opened up the church in our living room with six people. And now we see thousands. All I'm telling you is that God wants to test you to see if you really trust him to do the impossible in your life. And all I'm telling you right now is that you are at the Faith Center. This is a place where everything you need, you can get it right here. Your destiny is tied to this man and woman of God's mouth. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay. Let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all a personal story of how they've blessed me. Last year, last year, me and my wife were on the verge of divorce. I mean, we got a big church. I got two locations, thousands of people coming, but my house was falling apart. Because one of the things I did wrong was I started to put the church before my family. And I made up my mind, and I'm gonna tell y'all when I made it up, when I talked to this brother right here at two in the morning, when I was in the bed all by myself, because my wife won't there. And I cried on the phone with this man for two hours. And this brother prayed with me for two hours until I could get my mind right. When I was getting ready to leave, he said, don't do it, man. Don't do it. He talked with me, prayed with me, put me in a place spiritually where I could hear God again. Are you listening to me? So I'm not standing here just because I'm cool with him. I'm standing here because this man literally saved my life and my family, and he didn't even know how serious it was at the time. So I'm here because of what these two have done. I can't even tell you how many times I called Lady Felicia, told us, I need you to call my wife. I need you to write a note. I need you to send her a text. And you know what she did? I got you, brother. I got You know why? Because they fight for me. Now, all I'm telling you is this. I know what you have here is genuine. I ain't up here trying to preach something to make you feel good about your pastor. I'm a witness that what you have here is genuine. Don't discard it. You could be anywhere and, and somebody be preaching you some mess that ain't got nothing to do with where you're trying to go. And they just religious as I don't know what. But you got people here that love you. Let me tell you something. When I talk to them, all this dude talk about is faith center. All day long. I'm like, dang, you ain't got nothing else going on? <laughs> Come on now. 
Can I tell you, can I tell you how much he loved y'all? He quit his own business. Hey, 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 hey. And, and the business wasn't failing. Can I tell y'all a personal story? Me and him went to Africa together with Dr. Bailey, and there were people in Africa trying to talk him in not to quit his business. And he's sitting at the table, and he's like, but I got to do what God told me to do because of his love. He said, Pastor, I got to give Faith Center my all. He said, my, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in between. I got to give Faith Center my all. And then I like the other thing that he said. He said, and then I got to give my wife and kids my all. Can I, are y'all listening to what I'm saying? This is your pastor. This is your first lady. How many of y'all thankful that God gave you some good folk here? Now listen. I'm going to pray that whatever you believe in God for is going to happen in the next three months. Who here believes that? Stand on your feet if you believe that. Let's get ready. I want you to receive this by faith in the name of Jesus. Somebody in here, glory to God, has been believing God for new jobs and new property. Those are two things that God has put in my heart. New jobs and new property. Amen. If, man. New jobs and new property. If, uh, those are the only two things that God gave me right now. I know there's some other things you believe God. But new jobs and new property. If I'm talking to you, run to this altar real quick. I got to just speak over you right now. New jobs, new property. Real quick. New jobs, new property. In the name of Jesus. Now come with your hands up because you're about to be arrested by the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. That everything you've been believing God for is about to take place. Hey. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, squeeze in. Squeeze in, y'all. Get them in. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, by faith in Jesus' name, something is about to shift for you and your family right now. In Jesus' name, I speak. I speak it over your life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm going to speak over new jobs first. God says in this season, God says, I'm not going to give you a job. God says, I'm going to give you a place to fulfill your potential. Because where you're at needs to match your passion. So whatever you want to do, God says, I'm going to divinely hook you up with that. So you will not be working a job. You'll be working your gift. In Jesus' name. Get your hands up and receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. I speak now to every individual right now. That In the name of Jesus, before the year is out, Lord God, you will supernaturally hook them up with their passion, hook them up with their gift, hook them up with their purpose. They will no longer work a job. They will not operate in their calling. And we thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name. Now, those that are believing God for property, you already heard the word. Isaiah 54 says, enlarge your tents. But the first thing you got to do is enlarge your thinking. I want you, in the name of Jesus, listen, before the month is out, I want you to go walk your property. I want Some of y'all, you've seen it. You passed by it. God says, everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread, I will give it to you. I want you to put your feet on that property and walk around it and declare a decree that that property belongs to you. Get your hands up and receive in the name of Jesus. God, we declare a decree that before the year is out, the earth will have to give up that property to my brother and to my sister. God, we thank you that they will have something that represents the anointing that's on their life. Big. Oh, they, oh, hold on, hold on. Keep playing. Hold on. Just a, here's what I, I just heard the scripture. God told the children of Israel that when they come out of the wilderness, he said, I'm going to give you property. Watch this. And he said, and it will be filled with good things. God says, everybody that's looking for property, not only is he going to give you property, he's going to give you the furniture for the property. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait. You ain't going into something new with old stuff. God said, I'm about to give you new lavish stuff. In the name of Jesus, get your hands up and receive it. Come on, I'm speaking it right now. In the name of Jesus, houses full of good things. Thank you, Lord. And you will supernaturally do it for them according to their faith. So we thank you that it's already done. Jobs and property before the year is out. It's yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give a praise like you believe it. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
I need you to hug somebody, tell them it's already done. Hug somebody, you in the audience, hug somebody, tell them it's already done. Hallelujah. You watching by streaming, it's already done. If you're watching by streaming, lift your hands and believe God for the supernatural is yours today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and give God a great praise. Can I give you, I want to give you a prophetic word from the scripture to help seal this anointing. Ezekiel 12, verse 26 through 28, the NIV version says, The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. I think y'all got that scripture back there. Son of man, the Israelites are saying the vision he sees is for many years from now. And he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Y'all still don't know how to receive. Come on now. He says, none of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. How many of y'all receive that right now? Somebody shout, no more delay. No, you said it. I said, shout, no more delay. In Jesus' name. All right. Y'all receive that by faith? Okay, now listen. I want to do something special for my friends today. And uh, I need you to get my uh, backpack because I got my checkbooks up in here. The Bible says this, Hebrews 13 and 17, message translation. It says, be responsive to your pastoral leaders. That's up there too, y'all. Y'all got it? I want y'all to read it. Can y'all see it? Read it out loud. What's it say? Be responsive. Come on. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. How many of y'all believe they work under the strict supervision of God? Okay. Now, now, here's the instructions. If you believe that, read the next line. Contribute. No, it said, why would you want to make things harder for See, we're here to make sure that they thrive. Do, do y'all know the better they feel, the better you're going to feel? Let me give you one more scripture. Get that Timothy scripture up real quick. Then we're going we're gonna to put our faith to action. All right? Put that Timothy one I gave y'all up there. Is that First Timothy something? Y'all got it? Do y'all have that one? Do y'all have that one? Did you get that to him, Louis? First Timothy, I think it's the last one I gave y'all. Praise God. Thank God for our AV folks. They're doing a good job. Okay, look at this. Let's read out loud. What's it say? How many of y'all believe your pastors do a good job? Amen. So how many of y'all believe they deserve what? Come on, keep reading. Especially the ones who work hard. How many of y'all believe he works hard at preaching and teaching? I mean, listen, some days I tune in to Campbell, man. I mean, he'd be up here, y'all ain't listening. Y'all don't hear this. No, I need you to hear this. I mean, his veins is coming out, man. He's trying to get it to you. Don't he work hard? Come on, keep reading. Scripture tells us, don't muzzle a working ox, and a worker deserves. I li listen. I can feel you if, if you if if you was under a pastor. I'm not doing nothing because you got a lot of them out there. But you got some you got some folks in here. They working for you. They working hard for you. I love that little red carpet thing. I'm gonna have to steal that thing, dog. I'm on. I came through that red carpet. I said, Hey, I probably, I got my little swag on for a minute. I might have to steal that. Amen. So y'all. Nicole, we'll talk about that. We'll work on that when we go back to T.O.P. So if y'all come down to T.O.P., you see red carpet, you know where I got it from, all right? Hey, y'all, I want to give them the biggest offering that they've ever gotten in the history of the faith center. No, 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 that's the wrong one. 
Come on, y'all. We got to write the ones that, that go through. We ain't doing the ones that. Okay. Come on, y'all say amen to that. Now, listen, I'm going to start this off with $1,000. All right. Now, I won't, I ain't going to do the lines like, they're, you know, like folk do. All I'm going to do is according to your faith. You guys, these people are awesome. These people are awesome. Listen, they are worth more than two Falcon, Atlanta Falcon tickets. They worth more than a happy meal. They worth more than that go to corral you're going to eat later on. They worth more than that. Cheesecake factory, whatever you're going to do. They worth more than that. On this day, here's the, here's the crazy thing. They do this all year long, and all they ask for is one day. Just one day. One day. I mean, they, and they, they're giving it to you all, week, all year long, and all they ask for is one day. One day, let's make them feel like, man, my church really hooked us up. All right? Praise God. Come on, praise God. Okay, now listen, I want y'all, I want everybody in this church to get as close as you can to a thousand. You're gonna match my gift. As close as you can. Talk to your wife, talk to your husband. All right. If a hundred is as close as you get, get there. If two hundred close as you get, get there. Five hundred close as you get, get there. I want y'all to get there. Let's let's let them know on this one day how much we appreciate all the preaching and teaching that they've done for us. Would y'all agree with that? Now, somebody in here that's saying, man, that's too much to give to a man of God. Well, then you hold on to it because your blessing ain't coming to you. You know, you, let's, let me tell you something. If you, if you mad about it, hold on to it. Don't, because the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. But here's what I want to ask you. Here's what I ask you, my brother, my sister. Have they said anything that brought life to you? I mean, on those days where you came into this building and you didn't know how you was going to get through the week and he said something that brought life to you that you didn't even pay for on one day of the year, show them how much you appreciate it. Just say, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. All right. Are y'all ready to do this? Okay, are you ready to do this? I, I want to be a blessing to them because they have been a blessing to me and my family and to our church. Amen. God bless you all. Now, I don't know how we're going to do this. I want to follow directions. We're just going to take it up or... Huh? Oh, it's on me. Oh, I could do it any way I want. Get my swag on in. Here's what I want us to do. This is a this is a sacrificial offering, isn't it? So I would like for us to do. I, I believe that this is an altar up here. I want y'all to lay your gifts on this altar because I believe that as you sow into the man and woman of God, you're sowing into your destiny too. Y'all receive that? Hold your gifts up to the Lord. I don't, I don't know if you guys do the text to give, all that kind of stuff. But if you're doing that, I think they have instructions. They know what to do. Day of honor. Day of honor. All right, so y'all y'all heard, heard the instructions. All right, hold up your gifts. Okay. Make sure they have the... Huh? Does anybody need an envelope? Raise your hand. We don't want to miss anybody. There she, she should need an envelope, y'all. Let's get her. Amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Did you guys receive the word today? Did y'all receive that? No limits, amen. Okay, let's get your seat up in here because this is an off, this is an exciting time that we get to sow into our leaders, amen. Anybody else need an envelope? Praise the Lord, amen. Checks are being made to Vincent Campbell, all right, Vincent Campbell, because this is a gift for him. You already did your tithes and offerings, now this is a gift for him, amen. But wasn't it funny how when they, they were getting ready to give the envelope to Vincent Campbell, how Lady Felicia jumped out there and grabbed that envelope. Did y'all didn't see that, huh? Y'all didn't see how she jumped out there and grabbed that? <laughs> like faith just jumped up. All right, come on, y'all. Lift your seat up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to sow into these great leaders. They have meant so much to us, and they mean so much to us. And God, we just thank you for every word that they preach, for everything that they've said over the last year. Lord God, you have definitely sent them for us, and so we give you praise for it. So we thank you now. We ask now that you would bless this seed, and as we sow it into the leaders' lives, God, we thank you, Lord God, in turn, we will see a harvest in our own lives. We give you praise for it now, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Come on, y'all run up to the altar, just kind of put on. Y'all, can we do bless? Y'all got bless? Come on, we bless in the city.
Everybody say bless. turn it over to the greatest pastors in this area. Pastor Vincent and Lady Felicia Campbell, give it up! Give it up! So will you all close your eyes and bow your heads and just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and your sacrifice. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, raised from the dead for me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me how to live an overcoming life with you. I am changed. I am forgiven. I am saved. In your name I pray. Say amen. If you repeated that sincerely from your heart for the first time, you just gave your life to Jesus, or you rededicated your life to Jesus, you can make contact with one of our ushers, and they have some free information explaining the decision that you made. Before we get into our housekeeping, I just believe that we need to celebrate the man of God for the word of God on today. 